today we would be talking about uh, introduction to finite elements and its utility in MEMS design and manufacturing. Microsystems are quite complex. The analysis and uh, design of this requires a tool and finite element is one such tool that can be used. So, in next series of lectures, about six of them, we would be talking about finite elements, uh, its basic science and theory. Now, the question is what is finite elements? So, finite element is a computer aided tool to solve complex equations involving calculus and finding out the response of this physical system subjected to some external influences such as loads, currents, etc. Let us go into the history of finite element method. The finite element methods were started by civil engineers as a part of the structural mechanics problem solving. It was initially developed by John Argeris from Germany and Levy as early as 1947 to 53. And then the method was called stiffness method by Turner and Clough in uh, University of Berkeley. And that was the starting point of the finite element method. Since then rapid uh, advances were made and the first book was for, uh, published in 1967 by Zinkovich. And there were many pioneering works in this area was made by Zinkovich, Wilson, Oden, Gallagher and Many, many such people, many commercial packages had come uh, starting from this, uh, the works of these people. The first conference was organized in FEM in 1965 and in Asia, in Japan, United States seminar was organized in 1969. Since then, there was a rapid progress that has been made and, and many standards were developed for finite element uh, and it has become a tool to as a design and analysis tool for very ma many, many uh, areas of engineering and science. Now coming back to the, the, the whole concept of engineering design, we have a physical problem and the physical problem we are requested, we are required to find answers. For example, how large the deformation in a structure? How is the heat transferring? What is the level of capacitance in a circuit? What is the level of vibrations in the mechanical system? So, in order to solve this physical problem, first of all, we need to come up with a mathematical model. And this mathematical model has to be developed based on certain assumptions regarding its geometry, the kinematics, the material law, loading, boundary conditions and many such parameters. So, based on this, we develop a differential equation that requires to be solved. Let us take an example of a simple bracket which is found in many mechanical engineering system. And this bracket we are now required to find what is the bending moment at section AA. We know the beam theory, beam theory was developed way back and using that beam theory we can really find out what is the bending moment by taking the product of the load and the distance. And we also want to find out what is the deflection in a beam. We still have a beam theory here. So, we can use the beam, the beam approximation to find out. Let us see what we get here. So, as I said by taking the product of the load and the lever arm distance which is the length of the section, we can find out the bending moment. And we can take the, uh, the tip deflection from our strength of materials and we can find out this is nothing but W into length cube by 3 in divided by the flexural rigidity here. And we also add the, the shear deformation approximation which is coming from this term. So, if we take the sum of this, we can get the deformation. Now, the question needs to be asked is how reliable is this model? Is this what we get in the actual structure? How effective is this model? So, in order to understand this, we need to un introduce some more sophistication into this uh, uh, model. So, we introduce the theory of elasticity which is a complex system of differential equation given by the equations of equilibrium and the constitutive model and the strain displacement relation. If we use this and solve, 
if at all we solve then we can get a, a better approximation than to the crude beam model. But solving this equation is not trivial exercise. In fact, it is not possible to solve many such equations exactly. So, now the question is once we develop a mathematical model in terms of a differential equation we need to solve. So, we need numerical method and finite element method is one such method that we are going to solve. So, what does the finite element do? It creates a geometric model and this is a solid model of a bracket and this is a finite element model. So, it is it decomposes the entire domain into many subdomains which are connected together. And these are connected together by an entity called the element and an entity called the node. So, the entire structure is divided into many such elements and each element has node which are connected to other elements to make a structure. Then we describe the behavior of each such element and synthesize the behavior of the whole element to make the assembly of elements and get the overall behavior of the structure. In short, this is what the finite element is all about. Once we get this, we get the, the primary parameter which is in the case of a bracket is a deformation and once we get the deformation, we post process the, uh, the deformation to get the the subsequent quantities like the stresses, the moments, the shear forces etcetera. So, we have three process, first is pre-processing, we create the mesh, we call the mesh by taking the small elements and nodes, we do the analysis, we post process the results. So, it is involved in three steps. And now, if we put this sophisticated model and find out what is the moment, we will come to that how we can do that little later of the theory of analysis. We get the moment, moment is exact as what was predicted by the beam, but the deflection is at the higher end. So, we can conclude that with respect to the question we pose, the beam model is reliable. If the required bending moment is to be predicted within 1 percent and the deflection to be predicted within 20 percent. But the good thing about the beam model is it is highly effective since it can be solved by easily by hand or very fast whereas the other method required a computational tool like a computer to solve. Now the next question we ask what is the maximum stress in a bracket? Is it possible to predict by the beam model? The answer is no because we do not know beam is an approximate crude model where the entire analysis is along the axis of the beam whereas the stresses can occur anywhere within the bracket which is not possible to capture. So, we indeed need a sophisticated model, we indeed need a numerical method and finite element method is one such method that can be used to uh, achieve the, the, our goal. So, the selection of a mathematical model depends upon the response to be predicted especially with respect to this beam analysis what we have done and the most effective mathematical model is the one that gives us answer in a reliable manner with the least effort. Hence, in conclusion we can say that the numerical solution is the only accurate tool uh, to model uh, the, the mathematical aspects of a physical problem. Hence, we can summarize whatever we talk now in the form of a flowchart. We construct a physical problem based on certain analysis, certain requirements, we construct a mathematical model for this physical problem, we use a numerical tool to solve this and we find whether the answer is ok or not, is it does not make sense then we leave at it otherwise we need to redefine the analysis, we need to change our assumption, come up with an improved mathematical model and do the same analysis and if even that is not ok, now we need to f f question our own physical system. So, we need to do some design optimization, go back, change the physical system and do perform the analysis till we get the required confidence in the answers that we got from the numerical tool. 
So, in summary, we can say how does the fi finite element work? So, the entire domain is divided into small sub regions called n events and the collection of elements will called what is called the mesh. So, the mesh is an important component in FEM. Then the governing equations that is the equations which we constructed from the physical system to the mathematical equation are transformed into approximate algebraic equation that are amenable for numerical solution. And the equations are numerically evaluated over each element of the mesh and assembled based on the element connectivity. We will come to these details a little later. Then we put every problem has some boundary conditions and the boundary conditions has to be imposed onto the system and then the resulting uh, sub so smaller systems are solved uh, to get the required responses. Then once the six systems are solved, we post process the results to get the subsequent quantities like the stresses, displacement, current. Uh, voltage etc. as the case may be which depends upon the problems we are solving. Let us see how FEM works. So, basically if you take a small integral given by here which, which can be exactly integrable and the exact solution is given here and the domain is between minus 1 to plus 1. And if you take the function x square plus 6 the variation looks somewhat given in this uh, figure. And now, if we plan to use this in a numerical sense, how do we do this? There are two ways that we can do. In the first scheme, we divide this whole region into sub regions, many, many. So, in the first case, we have divided into one, in the second case, we are divided into two segments. Within each segment, we choose a function f of x which approximate this section. And once we approximate this section, we assume certain value of f of x. The most easiest way to do it is the constant value taken exactly at the midpoint of this section. For this say for example, if they, they are divide into one element, we take this as the value of f of x. The product of this constant function and the length of the segment will give you an approximate area under the curve which becomes the value of the integral. And summing up all these uh, quantities from all if each of this subsection will give me the overall uh, value of the integral. For example, let us take a single uh, if we divide this region by one, uh, one segment and compute it, we get that the average error is about minus 5.26 percent. And if we increase this to two segments, the error decreases from 5.26 to 1.32. If we decrease it further to four segments, drastically reduces to 0.3 percent. And if we increase further uh, the, uh, the number of segments, it reduces to almost negligible 0 to 8 percent. FEM works exactly in this principle. The more the number of elements you choose within the domain, more accurate would be your uh, basic uh, the, the accuracy of the answers, it improves a lot. So, this is in the principle that FEM works. The second method by which we can integrate is instead of choosing a constant value, we can choose a, a, a linear function f of x. When we take this, the function behaves as shown in the manner and which is a vast improve to the constant value we have taken and even with two segments we are able to get very accurate results only a small portion is not represented. So, as we increase the order of the approximation within this element we can get better solutions. This is the very principle in which the finite element works and this is the principle that we will adopt in future for analysis of many of the systems that will follow in this particular codes on smart and micro systems. So, what we have done here is two key steps. One is divide the integral, interval of integral to improve the accuracy and each integral you choose a proper function. So, the numerical result what we have seen here is an approximation to the exact solution. It is not exact, it is only an approximation and more number of intervals we use, we approach the exact solution. And the accuracy of the numerical results depend on the number of sub intervals and approximations that we choose. 
So, we directly translate this to FEM. If you have a suction here which is given here, if you want to increase the accuracy of this model by FEM, we divide into sub elements. More the elements, much better is the results. Okay. And, the, and the two key steps which I identified is there. And within each element, we can use an approximation function which is of higher order. So, the more the higher the order, better would be the approximations to the exact solutions you get to the problem. So, there is a one to one comparison with what we did for the integration with the finite elements. Now, we will come, why do we have to study finite elements? How does it all help the designers? FEM offers many important advantages in design. It can be easily applied to your complex geometries, irregular shape uh, geometries composed of several material models, different material uh, construction having complex boundary conditions. A variety of analysis can be done with FEM which can be steady state or uh, uh, it can be a steady state or uh, transient or eigenvalue problems. We can solve both linear as non-linear problems, a wide variety of problems including cutting across all kinds of disciplines such as solid mechanics, fluid mechanics electromagnetics, biomechanics, MEMS, acoustics, etc. There are many general purpose FEM packages that has that are industry standards are available at a reasonable cost and can be readily executed on microcomputers including workstations and PCs. FEM can be coupled to CAD models to direct uh, modeling and meshing. Meshing is a major problem, so you can actually have CAD programs we can actually translate that CAD programs and automatically mesh the system and uh, there are many other how does it uh, help the design uh, uh, organization. The basically uh, it gives us the reduced time, redesign costs, identify issues in designs, components before dependency in other components, prohibit changes optimize performance before uh, prototyping and allow more time for designer to use engineering judgment. So, there are many advantage that uh, the FEM can offer in design organization. Now, let us talk about the need for FEM in microsystems and MEMS, is it requ required? So, if you take a micro system, it takes anywhere between 4 to 10 years for its development. A lot of products or product ideas that are designed can never be produced because of various issues like manufacturing, uh, the process that are uh, available, the availability of the fabs, many such, uh, many such uh, constraints are there. There are no sufficient tool support currently available for efficient design and manufacturing. The traditional design method takes a long time and are cost ineffective. So, the new methods and tools are necessary and finite elements is one such tool that can be effectively used for MEMS or microsystem design. So, microsystem technology if you take, it is a melting pot of nearly all engineering disciplines. You need, uh, uh, it is a multidisciplinary entity, very complex systems are possible and uh, we all know that it is a key technology for the 21st century. And uh, the methods of single disciplines cannot be adopted straight away. If you look at the overall microsystem technology, there are four components of designs. One is the conceptual design where you say that I want this, this kind of a system and that has to be translated into a system design where we need a software design component to be there. Then that is converted into an architectural design where there is a digital design component and an analog design component and finally, the MEMS design. So, before the MEMS design can preclude all these other three design has to be in place before the MEMS design can be taken up. So, if you look at the design process and the system concept, the system concept design starts here, then uh, where there is an initial concept that is developed which has to be simulated and verified and there is an architectural design as I said before, 
which also requires some amount of simulation and verification because it has two components, a uh, uh, the, say the software uh, design component. Then we make a cell design and a cell layout and a system layout before we can go in for fabrication. At each process, simulation and verification is an important aspect. If to make sure that the designed concept, the conceptual design is indeed achievable, indeed manufacturable. And this is one of the things and the similar without simulation and verification it is not possible. And finite element tool is one such tool where we can actually do this uh, simulation and verification to see whether the feasibility of the design. I have a question need to ask, do we need mechanics? Mechanics is an important part of the MEMS design process. A lot of mechanisms use mechanical systems, we all know and it is arguably, arguably the oldest and the best understood discipline in world. And many of these mechanics based designs are library based, okay, we need, suppose you need a, a beam connector, we, we have a beam element available, so we call from the, uh, the, the library of beams and there are many such beams are there, the, the isotropic beams or the anisotropic beams or the composite beams, etc. And the components and materials and the behavior are most well understood. But there are some issues. What are the issues? The models from the mechanical and electrical domains are not simply transferable. So, you need to do a mechanical design separate and you are need to do the electrical design separate and this needs to be coupled together for MEMS design. And the physical and process considerations are many times are not covered. So, while understanding the design, we also should say what kind of MEMS process that you are going to make it. Is it going to be a LIGA process or a DRIE process or a sub bulk micro machining process and these process have to be embedded in the design and the simulation aspect of it in order to make sure that the conceived design is indeed feasible. So, most of this uh, current analysis is what we call the top down design approach which is basically uh, takes does not take care of the manufacturing into consideration. So, that is something that we would look at it here. So, the MEMS design requirements. So, as I said there is a multitasking analysis uh, is required in the MEMS design process one is confronted with many more design and simulation tools than generally required for conventional IC design. And this can be categorized into four categories that is the multiple physics, multiple disciplines, multiple players and multiple tasks. And each of this has subtasks which are, so if you talk about multiple physics, we require the coupling of the electrical domain, mechanical domain, thermal domain, optical domain, fluidic domain, etc. So, all these domains have needs to be coupled. So, the understanding of these are re required for MEMS design. If you talk about disciplines, there are uh, multiple disciplines involved that is analog, digital, RF, bio, process, reliability, packaging, testing, etc. If we talk about the players involved, the, we need specialists or engineers in each of these domains like mechanical, electrical, thermal, optical, etc. We need to get the customer, customer inputs in order to improve the design. We need to see the assembly house, the fabs and those kind of uh, entities which are very key to the success of any MEMS device that are going to be developed. And also of course, not to mention the testing partners. So, if we talk about the tasks, there are many multiple tasks are involved, FEM is one such task, the others are process development, design kit setup, design rule checks, modeling from top down, simulation, drawing layout, CAD, the process flow, programming, scripting, interfacing, testing, measurements and many more. So, as we see that MEMS is a very MEMS design and manufacturing is a very involved process where this is one way where the manufacturing and the uh, design goes hand in hand. Unlike the conventional mechanical or civil design, 
we cannot separate the manufacturing from, uh, from the design. So, the manufacturing aspect has to be taken in the design in order to make a MEMS device. So, the what are the MEMS design modes? We have a concept and we have a design and there are a number of intermediate steps that are going to be there. So, what is the level of abstraction that we are, we are talking about? So, we have we start the concept with the concept hand calculations, then we create a mathematical model and we simulate it and the similar, there are different modeling is there. We talk, we talk about BEMS modeling as a behavioral modeling which we need to check with the finite element tools and we need to uh, design the process flow in the manufacturing then make a layout do the design uh, checks before it is going for fab for the final device uh, manufacturing. So, there is a lot of things involved in the design from the concept to device and as we see that FEM is a very key aspect here in this aspect. So, as I said FEM is very much very important for the design and manufacturing of the MEMS. So, what is the MEMS process? The entire MEMS process can be thought of as four sub components, one is the structural, one is the behavioral and is the physical and geometrical. We put the physical and mad geometrical in one, one uh, axis here, the other y axis it is a y process which forms in a big circle and there is a overlapping of the activities. For example, if you take a cell here in the geometrical cell and modules and mechanical structure here, okay, we need this cell is basically is overlapping with the sensor structure in the structural aspects and the uh, behavioral aspects you have the Boolean expression and the structural expression. So, there is a multiple overlapping of the activities and all these activities which are following in each overlap each other. So, for example, for the complete system we need to have the processors here and the system integration with functions has to be there. And the systems we talk it as a behavioral aspect whereas, the processes are the structural aspects and the complete system is a physical and geometrical aspect and there is overlap of each other. Each of these activities forms the outer and inner circles which are of importance. So, we start with the polygon here and end with the system here. So, the MEMS process you see is a very complex process that is there uh, for us to uh, design. Now, let us talk about the difference between microelectronics and MEMS. Microelectronics is a well established uh, the design process are there where we start with the concept, we do the behavioral modeling, develop the structure, geometry, design rule checks and there is a uh, the fabrication. So, up to the geometry part of it there is hardly any, any uh, difference between the microelectronics and MEMS, but what is more important is the process management and the success of the device that you design depends upon effective process management. What is the process management involved? Process in my management involved the choice of the fab the choice of the the the, uh, the 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 fabrication flow diagram and the complete management of the entire flow process itself so the unless you have a process management in place mems device would not be successful and for all these things the pro, uh, the finite element plays a important part in development of this process management aspect of it which is very critical and which is not that critical especially in the area of microelectronics. So, let us take the difference between uh, the microelectronics and MEMS design process. Let us talk about microelectronics. There are only few elementary device structures that have that can be developed with microelectronics. As opposed in MEMS you have the ever growing variety of different devices. The microelectronics aspect uh, design is very complex system topologies are very complex and topographics are very complex. Whereas, in MEMS the system topologies are very simple uh, compared to microelectronics. 
And again in microelectronics it is composed of a huge number of simple electrical basic elements whereas in MEMS is composed of small number of devices with high functional complexity employing transducer type effects. So, in, in summary we can basically say microelectronics is only the electrical domain predominant design whereas in MEMS there are several energy domains that have to be cross coupled uh, in order to make a system. So, the MEMS design is an order of magnitude more complex compared to the, uh, the microelectronics. So, let us see the, the entire design process. So, as I said we start with the specification based on the determiner the needs and specification we come up with a concept. So, that is what we call the requirements. So, we model this concept, we simulate it, we synthesize basically we the simulation is through development of this schematics which is shown here and uh, once we put all the all the sub elements of the schematics we develop the model a 3D model which is shown here which is subjected to finite element analysis and the analysis is performed say by synthesizing all these sub components and once we get this we, we based on the results of the finite element simulation we develop the process flow diagram that is the flow sequence what kind of mass we need to use for the manufacturing what kind of process we are going to adapt based on the simulation results and then finally it goes to the production where we develop this micro system. So, it is a fairly complex process and we see that how important the finite element analysis is linking from the concept to the final fabrication. So, what are the different classification of micro system design? First we call it as a behavioral design which is what we call the top down approach we go from the concept to design and the second is the fabrication near design where we do a bottoms up approach. So, both designs so we need to do both in order to get a complete system. So, we will go through what are the important aspects of each of this. So, in the behavioral design basically it is the most important or the most difficult part of it is development of the schematics. So, by schematics we say that okay, we take a big uh, a device say an RF switch or something we need to say where we need to put the circuit elements, where we need to put the filters, where we need to put the switches etcetera and these are all library based. So, it based like it is what we call the spice like behavioral simulation. Then we generate the layout, the layout either automatically or manually and we extract the parameters or parasites, parasites is what are the parameters on which this uh, a particular factor is depend dependent upon. We perform the design rule check and then we make the layout and this layout goes for the uh, fabrication. The process flow is developed, we say what kind of process we need and it goes to the, uh, the fab for the making of this device. So, we have a symbolic design that is based on the concepts, we simulate, we make a layout, we extract the parameters, we verify and send it to the, uh, the fab. So, these are the process involved in the behavioral design. So, what we see here is there is something lacking here that is we do not take aspects of the fabrication aspects into our design. So, what is the outcome of this? There is no guarantee that this design will work because we have not taken care of the aspects that behave that influence the fabrication into our design process or also in the analysis process. So, let us take an example of an RF switch. So, we have many circuit elements, many resistors that are made here and this is uh, something there are many softwares like Covent Aware and Intel suits are available where these library of these elements are available. If you know conceptually what you are looking at, so a lot of engineering judgment is required, lot of understanding of the whole system is required. So, you put it at the appropriate pace and generate the model. 
So, this is a library. So, we take the okay, we take the circuit elements, we take the resistor elements, we take the filter elements, all these things are put into that system uh, into a, and, may, and we make a layout and this layout is basically converted into a 3D model and this 3D model through many of the CAD programs and these three 3D models are meshed and then uh, we perform the finite element analysis. So, this is the layout of what we thought of a, a MEM system uh, uh, and this layout we make the design here. So, we do a 3D simulation and here is a finite element simulation of this system of the RF switch which is there. This is the meshing we do from the CAD model. So, then once we do the analysis, we extract the parameters, we verify and then we decide on the what kind of process we need to take. So, this is a behavioral design where we see that FEM also plays a greater part in actually seeing whether the concept what you thought out is what you have realized. And this is the finite element model as we know that uh, this is a standard system. We have explained what is finite element, how it can be used. We have a graphical, in, uh, we have a graphical interface which basically where we can simulate the whole aspects of uh, the behavior of this system to various uh, inputs that we give to the system. So, that is why finite elements is very useful to actually verify your behavioral design whether it is a behavioral design or any design for that matter because it takes the input that you give and you basically assess this is a mathematical model for that problem and based on that the finite element will solve this. So, the second approach what we are talking about is the top down approach. What is this top down approach? So, we found that behavioral design does not account for manufacturing. The result although is well simulated and suitable, but feasibility is not guaranteed as I said earlier. The, it is necessary to have a continuous approach taking care of the fabrication into account. So, the various simulation tools for single step simulation that are used can be built in here. For example, let us see we have a concept here in the top down approach as in the case of the behavioral design. Then we say the functional principle, the arrangement of the functional layers. And this can be tuned with the FEM before finalizing it at the sub component level. Then we say a definition of the layer sequence. We need to say okay, we need to have a sacrificial layer which has to be removed. So, what would be the some portion is removed. So, because of that some secondary effects like residual stress may creep in. How do we do this? So, we need to do an initial analysis and this is a manufacturing aspect of it which is not taken care in the behavioral design and the definition of the process and systems and mask the adjustment of the process parameter based on the results that you get from the analysis. So, in every aspect of it you take care of the manufacturing as well. So, there is a greater feasibility of such a design is realizable than the behavioral design. So, this is the fundamental need for most of the design process and we need we see that finite elements plays a huge part of it in the success of this uh, top down design approach that we are talking about. So, what are we looking at right now? So, basically we need to have a system that is uh, uh, that combines the advantage of the both behavioral approach and the and the, the top down approach that is you take care of the good aspects of the behavioral approach that is development of this schematics based on your judgment and take the manufacturing of it and put it together and this is called the Pritzel approach. So, this looks like a Pritzel, a Pritzel is a, some kind of an eatable that is very popular in uh, America. So, they call this as a Pritzel approach and which is very important and in both these cases or both these design approaches we see that simulation plays a very big part and finite element is an important design tool in uh, hence it can be said that finite element is an important design tool for maps. Now, the question is need for such tools in maps what is the need? The need is predictive simulation by predictive simulation we say that 
we can construct virtual fabrication. So, we can actually see once the design is realized from FEM, we can do a build a virtual reality tool and simulate the whole fabrication process at stage by stage to see what are the problems that can be got even before actually entering the fab. Virtual experimentation in a case same advantages and optimized design according to the customer's supply specifics and this is the major advantage. And today because these are all costly process, we cannot start with something and end up something that, that is not feasible because by the time you would have spent enormous amount of money. So, tools such as this is absolutely necessary for us to do that. So, the major advantage of the predictive to, uh, simulations or the simulation of the device operation, physical understanding of the operating principles, analysis of the design variants we have and study of many trade offs that are going to be part of this whole design process. So, the advantage of such a tool is enormous because it is going to reduce the testing time, improve the design and uh, save a lot of money especially uh, to make sure, uh, make sure that the designed device is indeed feasible to realize. So, the purpose of FEA we have already said make the development cycle short and cost effective to understand the behaviors, limits, interaction and complex processes to optimize design and we all can also say when will this particular design fail. For example, if there is a capacitive uh, uh, where depends upon the uh, cap capacitive sensors depends upon the uh, deflection of a diagram. Uh, due to a, a, a induced electrical voltage, it can say what is the fatigue that is going to keep how many times, how many cycles this can stand. We can actually do a failure analysis. So, there is a major advantage in using FEA for the design. So, now the question is how does this whole thing work? As I said earlier, it is a multidisciplinary entity requiring understanding of the electrodynamics, the structural mechanics, fluid mechanics to develop microfluidic device, thermal domains and each are coupled to each other. For example, if you look at the structures and electrodynamics, structure is coupled to you know if we want to find out what is the loads caused by the electrical, uh, uh, electrical input onto the structure or what is the, the voltage that is generated due to a mechanical load. So, the, the, we, we are talking about piezoelectricity, uh, pyroelectric, pyroelectricity especially if it is a thermal electrical domain and the thermo mechanical domain, thermo fluidic domain and the, you see the number of expertise that is required and each is a separate component of analysis in many of the finite element tools and which has to be coupled together. So, MEMS design process requires a multi physics analysis tool and the finite element package that one is using should be in a position to do multi physics analysis. This is absolute necessity in MEMS. Now, let us look at the cost coupling and this is where we talked about the smart materials in our lecture, earlier lecture. So, the if you give some parameter as an output, some other parameter will come out as, a, as an input and vice versa. So, for example, and MEMS is no different. So, for example, if you give a thermal as the input, the out, output is thermal, it could be heat conduction. If the output is electrical, it could be a Seebeck effect, this is very important, or the pyroelectricity. Or if it is electromagnetic, we are talking about relative heat transport. If it is a mechanical, we are talking about thermal expansion. And if you are talking about the electrical, the electrical as an input, the output if it is thermal it could be a Joule heating or a Petlier effect, a electronic uh, polarization, conduction, optical recombination if it is electromagnetic, if it is mechanical we are talking about piezoelectric. It is only the change of one, one set of energy is changed into another set of energy. If it is electromagnetic as input, if the output is thermal we get an eddy current heating, optical carrier generation, induction, electromagnetic waves 
radiation of pressure etc. So, you see there is a multiple coupling of many domains here change of one type of energy into another type of energy that is what gives us the res desired results and the MEMS design what we did generate should be able to do this Th that, that is all the more difficulty and that is the reason where the manufacturing aspect has to be built into the MEMS design process. So, what is the desired effects of this cross coupling? So, the desired cost effect will be basically sensor or actuator operating principles can be uh, checked and realized and the undesired effects are the parasitics because if for example, if because of the electric field if the piezoelectricity is there it converts into mechanical energy in many cases we do not we may not need that. So, we are unnecessarily introdu introducing certain additional complexity in terms of coupling. But that once we understand the behavior of the system we need not actually go by that. So, basically if you understand the whole thing we can uh, uh, eliminate the undesired effect and if you take the overall advantages of the MEM system the advantages overwise the disadvantages. So, in MEMS design process we need to deal with a large number of variables uh, that are pertaining to different energy domains. For example, if it is a electrical electrochemical effects we are need to talk about dependency of the design on the diffu diffusion drift reaction if it is thermal on the temperature of the substrate. If it is a mechanical effects we will need to look at the deformation, the fluidic motion, friction, fatigue. If it is a electrostatic effects we are looking at what kind of capacitance we need to generate and the capacitance is very important for example, in the piezo resistive pressure sensors where it has to be of the order that is measurable. The surface forces that are going to generate if it is going to be in the electromagnetic domain we, we are looking at how we can actually radiate out the levels of radiation which depends upon signal propagation optics etcetera. In the magneto uh, in the magnetic region we are looking at magnetostatic effects etcetera. So, there are many domains uh, that we since we are coupling there is a whole range of parameters that we need to look at it uh, in order to verify the performance of a particular device that we are talking about. And the most important other aspect is how do we couple the multiple domains. For example, let us take an example of a, a mechanical domain coupling with the electrical domain. The mechanical domain is uh, uh, characterized by uh, a system which is given by theory of elasticity. So, the divergence of the sigma is equal to external forces. Okay. So, basically this is the mechanical uh, equation that, are, that needs to be satisfied on the mechanical domain. In the electrical domain we have the equation on the electric potential that is going to be there whether it could be an electrostatic or a electrodynamic problem. We have a separate solver for mechanical FEM solver, we have a separate solver for electrical. How do we couple this? The coupling we need to choose one parameter that is the balance of the forces or balance of the, uh, the velocities if it is a transient problem. So, basically we say the forces generated due to mechanical system should be equal to the forces generated by the electrical system at this interface. So, this is going to lead us an additional matrices in our whole FE solver and it is going to increase the size of the problem and this is what is needed. So, this coupling domain will depend on will change if the domains are different. For example, if you are talking about the fluid domain and the thermal domain, it is the temperature at the interface. So, if it is going to be a, a fluid domain and the uh, and the uh, uh, the fluid domain and the mechanical domain and the thermal domain. So, it is the electromechanical coupling that is going to be there. Uh, so, uh, I am sorry the thermo, thermo mechanical coupling that needs to be taken. So, every coupling will introduce an additional set of matrices and increase the problem sizes by orders of magnitude. So, the even though the mechanical solver is separate and the electrical solver is separate we need to couple them together and the finite element solver should have this multi physics capability if we have to use this 
for the analysis, design and fabrication of the maps. So, we use the different types of models in FEM, the beam models, we will come to this as we go along in the later part of the lectures that uh, I am going to give. So, finally, what is this we can summary? In summary, we can say that simulation is an important tool in MEMS and FEM is a useful simulation tool uh, that is required for the MEMS analysis and design and manufacturing process. The most MEMS structures can be modeled as rods, beams and plates. We will talk about what are rods, beams and plates in our subsequent lectures and how do we construct the finite element models for this. The DOF stands for degree of freedom which is an important terminology in finite elements can be like displacement velocities if it is a mechanical structure or if it is an electric field or a magnetic field if it is an electro uh, if it is uh, in the electrical domain or in the magnetic domain or electromagnetic domain temperature if it is a thermal domain etc. And what is required here is a very a good optimization tool that is coupled with FEM to obtain the optimum design. So, we have seen that FEM is a very important tool uh, for the analysis. So, in my next few lectures, we are going to talk about the science of FEM. In the science of FEM, we are going to say how the process is developed, how we can actually degenerate this uh, Earlier, the, the, the variations of each of these sub elements which I talked about in the initial part of the lecture and how we can actually build a system. Most of my lecture would be based on the mechanical systems, although and solving the mechanical equations derived from theory of elasticity, all the subsystems, uh, subsequent uh, uh, development for MEMS requires the electrical domain or the magnetic domain can be directly extended. So, it is only the mathematics aspect of it which I am going to talk about taking the mechanical system into uh, consideration in my subsequent lecture. So, in closure I would say in this lecture we studied what is a finite element analysis, it history, how it works how the number of elements increasing the number of elements is going to increase the number of uh, uh, element the, the accuracy of the solution. What are the advantages of a field? For example, how it can reduce the, uh, the, the testing time, uh, how it can reduce the manufacturing time, how it can be used in the MEMS design process, how it can actually help in uh, uh, making the rapid prototyping. So, many such advantages can be developed using FEM and uh, we also said how important MEMS uh, the FEM is MEMS and micro system design, how we, how we can build in the FEM aspects into the manufacturing, uh, how it is going to, uh, how we can couple two domains even though we have a separate FEM, uh, FEM solution here. So, these are some of the aspects that we have uh, studied in this, uh, in this lecture. Thank you.